Hey everyone, today I want to share a few life lessons from the book of Esther. Let's start with a quick summary of the book of Esther. In this book, there's a small Jewish community living in Susa, the capital city of the ancient Persian Empire. The king of Persia throws a big party that lasted several months. On the last day of the party, he calls for his wife, Queen Vashti, to come over to the party. She refuses to come because she's busy having her own party and doing her own thing. The king becomes very upset and he removes her title. He gets rid of her and he holds a beauty pageant to find her replacement. Now, quick side note, play your position. Play your position because if you don't play your position, your position will be taken from you. To whom much is given, much is required. With great power comes great responsibility. And if you don't properly manage what you have been given, what you have been given will be taken from you. Play your position. So now, back to the story. So quick recap. Um, where were we? So the king throws a party and calls for his wife to come over to the party, but she refuses. And so the king removes her position and holds a beauty pageant to find her replacement. Okay. And now one of the girls who enters the beauty pageant is a girl named Esther. Esther was a poor Jewish orphan who was adopted by an older cousin named Mordecai. Mordecai took her in and raised her as if she were his own daughter. He provided for her. He mentored her. He guided her. He taught her. And Esther grew up to become a very beautiful young woman. And now there's this huge beauty pageant. And with Mordecai's advice and guidance, Esther enters the pageant and hides her Jewish, her Jewish identity. Identity. Esther wins the beauty pageant, and the king elevates her to be the new queen of Persia. Now, keep in mind that they don't know that she's Jewish. To make a long story short, as time goes by, a powerful Persian official named Haman plans to kill all of the Jews, and he influences the king into signing a decree that will allow for the killing of all of the Jews. And remember, the king does not know that his wife, Queen Esther, is a Jew. At this point, there is a date that has been scheduled for the Jews to be killed. And, and Queen Esther is not even aware what is going on. She's in the palace. She's living the good life. And so Mordecai sends Esther a message explaining to her what is going on. And basically, he tells her, hey, we need your help because you are in a position in which you can help us. And Esther responds to Mordecai and expresses her fears. She wants to help her community, but she's also worried about approaching the king because there's a law that says that you can't approach the king unless you have been called by the king. So she's worried about jeopardizing her high position. But then Mordecai corrects her perspective. Mordecai explains to her that she has been elevated to her high position for such a time as this. He explains to her that she was blessed so that she can be a blessing to others. He explains to her that all this power and prestige and privileges and, and advantages and benefits and opportunities that she, has been, that, that she has been given is for a reason that is bigger than herself. And so now with that corrected perspective, Esther is motivated to leverage her position to help resolve the problem. But she realizes that she needs wisdom regarding how exactly she should do it because she does not know what to do. This is a very confusing situation. Question for you, what do you do when you are experiencing confusing situations? How do you deal with the anxiety of not knowing what to do? 
the anxiety of not understanding what is going on, the anxiety of not understanding what other people are thinking, the anxiety of not knowing how to appropriately interact with people. How do you deal with social anxiety? The way that Esther dealt with her anxiety is a great example of how we can deal with our anxiety. So how did Esther deal with her anxiety? Here's how she did it. She stayed in an attitude of prayer. Before making any moves, she decided to take time to pray because she knew that she needed God's help. She knew that she could not do this by herself. She knew that without God, she was not enough, but with God, she was more than enough. Side note, I believe that problems can be blessings if we use them as reminders that we need God. And if we use them as inspiration to stay humble and grateful and prayerful, prayer is powerful because it is really not about changing the situation. It's really about changing our hearts to align with God's plan and changing our minds to see God's perspective to obtain God's wisdom. So after she prays about it, she's ready. With a focus and firm foundation in God, she moves forward with discernment and strategy and a strong sense of responsibility and optimism and courage and compassion. And with her, with, with her attitude, her attitude is that I'm going to do what I believe God is calling me to do. And if I perish, I perish. Wow. She became very bold and courageous because her confidence was not in her strength. Her confidence was in God's strength. So how does the book of Esther end? Well, to make a long story short, Esther wisely and strategically approaches the king and saves her community. Here are three main life lessons that I see in the book of Esther. Number one, leverage what you have because God sends blessings to us in order to send blessings through us. Number two, maintain a strong foundation by staying in an attitude of humility, gratitude, and prayer. God is the only strong foundation. Everything else is fragile and unstable. And number three, teach what you learn. Mordecai taught Esther, and Esther ended up teaching and, and saving the whole community. Now, I don't know who's watching this right now, but I believe that there's a reason why you are watching this. I believe that this message is for you. And really, the message is this. As you go through your life journey, stay connected to God. And no matter where you are currently, in your spiritual journey, you can right now reach out to God and ask for help. Right now, this moment can be your new beginning. Will you pray this prayer with me? Please repeat after me. Dear, G dear Jesus, dear Jesus, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. I believe that you came to this earth, lived a sinless life, died on the cross for my sins and rose again to give me new life. Today, I place my faith, my trust, and my hope in you. Please come into my life. Please make me new. And please help me to follow you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.